Hello, everyone. I am Jian Jin Shi, a PhD student from Dr. Feng Shao's lab at National Institute of Biological Sciences. What we study is a deadly disease called sepsis. Sepsis can kill many people around the world, but currently we do not have any drug to treat this disease. And what we study and what we discover might provide new treatment for this deadly disease. To begin with, I would like to introduce what is sepsis. Sepsis, by definition, is systemic inflammation called, caused by infection. As shown here, this old man had a teeth infection, but didn't get proper treatment with antibiotics. And later, this infection spread into the bloodstream, and his body mounted a very strong immune response. Just looked like unleashing a, a very strong army. Sometimes this army can cause lateral damage to his own body and lead to sepsis. So what do you feel after you have sepsis? You may feel fever, chill, you can breathe rapidly, and your heart beat rapidly, and you may experience confusion, disorientation, as well as nausea and vomiting. So who are susceptible to sepsis? In general, People with weakened immune system are more susceptible to sepsis, including the elderly, pregnant women, children and infants, and people with chronic illness, including AIDS, diabetes, and cancer. This man lost his spleen after an accident and therefore lost a majority of immune system. And several years later, he had sepsis. And this little girl also had sepsis because his immune system is not strong enough yet. Uh, luckily, these two people survived sepsis. But sepsis, not, uh, but sepsis doesn't only kill susceptible people. It can kill anyone, including you and me. This young lady, she was a model from Brazil, uh, for, from Brazil and uh, she's healthy. In the beginning, she had a urinary tract infection, which is a quite common infection. And later, the infection developed into sepsis. And within only a few days, she died in the hospital at the age of 20. And one scary thing for sepsis is sep sepsis can kill people and kill people rapidly. So why should we care about sepsis? In United States alone, sepsis can, uh, in United States alone, over 750,000 people develop sepsis. Among them, over 200,000 people die. That is more than the population of the Salt Lake City. And uh, sepsis kill more people than breast cancer, colon cancer, and AIDS combined. And uh, sepsis also account for at least one third of all hospital deaths. Because sepsis patients usually need special care in the ICU, so it is a very expensive disease. And in the United States alone, in 2011, sepsis cost more than 20 billion US dollars. But most people don't even know about this disease. And sepsis has main three stages. In the beginning, it caused sepsis. You have a local infection that's through the lung or other places, and uh, this infection breaks your immune, def immune defense and uh, gets through to the bloodstream. And your body mounts a systemic inflammatory response. So this is stage one. And in stage two, you will experience several organ dysfunction. And this is called severe sepsis. And in the last stage, People will have multiple organ failure, as well as a sudden drop of blood pressure, and this is called septic shock. And for septic shock, there will be a 50% mortality rate. And one thing I want to mention is that sepsis is caused by our own reaction to the infection, but not to, due to the pathogen. Unlike other deadly diseases, sepsis has no drugs. Even after decades of clinical trials, none of them succeeded. So I, don't, I think the most important thing is we don't know enough about sepsis. So what caused sepsis? 
this is still an open question to the scientific community. And uh, I think maybe, I think scientists are making progress now to, towards understanding what caused sepsis. It begins with the late 19th century. Then uh, Richard Pfeiffer, a German military doctor who worked with Robert Koch, a very famous bacteriologist. At that time, what they found is that is injection of heat-killed bacteria, which cause cholera. And injection of this dyed bacteria can cause sepsis in guinea pig. He then hypothesized that there are some toxic substances inside this dead bacteria. It, was, it took about 50 years to find this toxic substance it to be the lipopolysaccharide, or LPS for short. LPS is the major component of the cell wall component of nearly all gram-negative bacteria. As shown here, this is an electron scanning it, this is a scanning electron microscopy picture of E. coli, a gram-negative bacteria. And this is what the cell wall looks like. And the most, the most abundant molecule on the cell outer membrane is LPS. If you zoom in, this is what the LPS molecule looks like. It contains two parts. One is sugar part, the other is lipid A. The lipid A, as shown in yellow, is the active part of this LPS molecule. If you inject LPS or lipid A into mice, and mice will de develop sepsis. So the question is, how can LPS cause sepsis? If you remember what I told you before, sepsis is caused by our own reaction to infection, not by the pathogens. So the similar question is, how can we respond to LPS? This is the pathway that people think play an important role in LPS sensing. Uh, the membrane-bound receptor called TLR4 and MD2 can directly interact with LPS molecule. They just look at the eyes of a cell. When the eye sees the LPS molecule, it can trigger the expression of a series of pro-inflammatory genes, including cytokines. And people used to, for a long time, people thought about, thought about that the, these cytokine armies are actually the cause of human sepsis. And more than 10 clinical trials have been performed with sepsis, fusion, sep 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 sepsis patient with targeting these cytokine army molecules, but none of them succeed. And later on, people thought about that, what about inhibiting this eye? If you blind the eye of the cell to LPS, and then you may block you, you, will block, you will block all the cytokines produced. So this is a molecule people developed to inhibit the TLR4, the eye of our cell. And indeed, this molecule can inhibit the production of these cytokine armies. But after years of trying, and after billion dollars spent on this project, and after recruiting of thousands of people on these clinical trials, this is what they got. As shown here, by looking at the survival rate of sepsis patients, the erotorin, the drug that can blind the eye to LPS, saves no people than the placebo. So it failed. But why? Do we missing do we miss something? This is indeed the case, as shown here. It is until recently, people have identified another pathway that can recognize LPS inside the cell in mouse macrophages. In this pathway, there is an unknown LPS sensor which can recognize LPS and lead to the signal to a gene called caspase 11 in mouse macrophages. And caspase 11 is a uh, pro-inflammatory caspases, it has two domains. One is the CART domain at the N terminal, and the other is the protease domain at the C terminal. And the proteases looks like a molecular scissors that can cut through other protein substrates. And activation of caspase 11 
can lead to a pro-inflammatory cell death. And this cell death may, may eventually lead to sepsis because this cell death has a much more strong effect than the production of these cytokine armies. So I will call this cell death unleashing a special forces. This is what this cell death looks like. As you can see here, in the beginning, cell just looks fine. And then all of a sudden, the cell just blow up and release all the cellular content, which is, which is very pro-inflammatory. You can see nearly all cell died after triggering this pro-inflammatory cell death. The importance of this pathway was further highlighted by this fact that caspase 11 knockout mice are resistant to sepsis. As shown here, wild type mice, nearly all wild type mice died within a day after you induct, induce L sepsis with LPS. And the caspase 11 knockout mice are still very resistant to this disease. And uh, thinking about that, Catspace 11 has a functional TLR4, which is the eye that can recognize the outside of outside LPS that outside the cell. This data suggests that the, the pathway that sends LPS inside the cell play a more important role in sepsis, at least in mice. So let's summarize what we have known before we get into this field. There is a pathway that can recognize LPS when LPS get into the cell, and this sensor is unknown. And uh, the sensor can activate caspase 11 and in mouse macrophages and lead to pro-inflammatory cell deaths, and there, therefore may trigger sepsis. But we are more care about human, and because human do not have caspase 11 genes, so the first question we want to answer is, does this, this pathway which since LPS gets into the cell, exists in human. To begin study this question, we need an efficient method to deliver LPS inside the cell. This is what we use called electroporation. If you put cell into an electric field and then give electric shock, you can punch holes on this cell membrane. And these molecules when this molecule that gets outside the cell can get into the cell through these holes. And this is what real happened after the cell membrane. In the beginning, the cell membrane is okay. And after electroporation, you can really see these holes on this cell membrane. And uh, after electroporation, and importantly, more importantly, the cell can recover from this electroporation. So, this is what method we use to deliver LPS. And if you de deliver LPS in a human immune cell called U937, which is a human monocyte, you can see here the cell just blow up. Pretty, look, pretty much looks like the, like the mouse macrophages. So this blow up will release all the cellular content and the unleashing the special forces, which, may, which can trigger sepsis in humans. And if you electroporation with control ligand, and the cell are just fine. We can also measure the cell death. You can see here, if you deliver LPS into the cell, it can cause over about 80, 100% of cell deaths. But control ligands do not cause any cell deaths. So in human, we do not have caspase 11, but we have two other closely related gene called caspase 4 and caspase 5. We first de detect the expression level of these two genes in human monocyte cell lines. As shown here, we can easily detect the protein as well as the mRNA of caspase 4, but we cannot detect any caspase 5 expression even use a more sensitive method that detect mRNA. So the one, the next question we want to answer is, does this pathway depends on caspase 4? Then we use a method that is a, a small molecule that can inhibit, transient inhibit caspase 4 expression in human cell. By using this small molecule, we can see here, by transient knockdown of caspase 4, 
this cell LPS induced pro-inflammatory cell death is totally blocked. So this data suggests that LPS can activate caspase 4 in human cells. And uh, un quite unlike with mouse data study, in mouse caspase 11 only expressed in macrophages, th that is immune cell. And for human cell, we have found that several other non-immune cells also have caspase 4 expression, as well as they can also respond to LPS inside the cell. So let's summarize the previous two slides. We have found that in human, we also have this pathway that can sense LPS get into the cell, and this pathway can activate caspase 4 rather than caspase 11 in mouse macrophage. And this pathway also can induce the pro-inflammatory cell death, which unleashing the special forces and may cause sepsis in human cells, in human. This is possible reason for why the TL4 blockers failed in clinical trials, because TL4 only blocks the pathway that can sense LPS outside the cell, and data from mouse suggests that the caspase 11 pathway, which recognized LPS inside the cell, play a major role in sepsis. And it is possible that targeting caspase 4 in human might be the right target the next question, and the most important question for this pathway, is what is the LPS sensor? Because if you know what, is, what the sensor is, you can design small molecules to inhibit this sensor, just like they did on TLR4. So after trying and trying, we almost try everything we can, but we cannot find this direct receptor. Then one day, after characterizing the biochemical function of this caspase 4 and caspase 11, we got some hint suggest that caspase 4 and caspase 11 might directly bind to, cas bind to LPS molecule. This is the data we, this is the data and this is the assay called pull down. So there is a molecule A and a molecule B. If you pull down molecule A, you get both, then suggest these two molecules have interaction. If you put down molecule A and only get molecule A, then it's possible that two molecules do not bind each other. And by using this method, we can see that both lipid A, the active part of LPS, or LPS, combined to caspase 4 in human and caspase 11 in mouse. And control ligand, which is lipopeptide or MDP, the mumero dipeptide, cannot bind to these two caspases. By using similar assay, we found that the N-terminal card domain, which represents about 90 amino acid, is the LPS binding domain. As shown here, the full-length protein can bind to LPS, and the card domain can also bind to LPS. But if you delete the card domain, the C-terminal protease domain can no longer bind to LPS. So there are no hypothetical LPS sensors that are other than caspase 4 and caspase 11. The direct sensor is the caspase 4 and caspase 11. This is quite surprising, and this is the big deal. So for caspase proteins, no one has shown that this protein can be a direct sensor for a molecule. This is the first case. And the next question we want to answer is, what happened after caspase 4 and caspase 11 recognized LPS? So this is the data we had. In the normal condition, without any treatment, the caspase 4 protein migrates as a monomer in your, gel, uh, in your nat polymer native gels. And if you incubate LPS or lipid A with caspase 4, this protein stick together to, la to form a lo a large oligomers, as shown here. But control ligands do not have this activity. We also have similar results with mouse caspase 11 proteins. So this is what we see. After binding with LPS, the caspase 4 in human and caspase 11 in mouse, to uh, become oligomers. If you are familiar with other caspases, 
For example, caspase 1, caspase 8, caspase 9. These proteins are all activated through protein complexes, but not self-assembled protein complexes. So the next question we want to answer is that does caspase 4 in human and caspase 11 get activated by these self-assembled protein oligomers? This is the assay we use. We first incubate LPS with this caspase 4 or caspase 11, and then measure the protease activity. Remember, the C terminal of these two proteins are proteases. So as shown here, incubation of LPS leads to the oligomerization, and by measuring the protease activity, you can see that for caspase 11, we have about 20, uh, we have about 20 fold of protein activity increase. And for caspase 4, we have about 60 protein, uh, uh, protease activity increased. So let's summarize what we have found. There is a pathway when LPS gets into the cell, it can be recognized directly by caspase 4 in human and caspase 11 in mouse with the N-terminal card domain. This activation may will lead to the oligomerization of caspase 4 and caspase 11. And the caspase 4 and caspase 11 are actually get activated through this oligomerization. Because these caspases are proteases, when they activate, they can cleave other substrates. And uh, maybe cleaved substrate may cause something and to lead to this pro-inflammatory cell death. And uh, remember I said earlier, the pro-inflammatory cell deaths release the special forces which may trigger sepsis. And uh, since this pathway is very important in most sepsis model, we hypothesized that this pathway might also play an important role in human sepsis. So I'm, what I am working on is performing a large-scale small molecule screen, which contains 300,000 small molecules. We are aiming to find some molecules that can inhibit this pro-inflammatory cell death, as well as the whole pathway. We, are, uh, we hope in the near future, or small molecule compound might provide new treatment for this deadly disease. OK, okay here's my acknowledgement. I first would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Feng Shao, uh, for his guidance and support during these years. And I would also like to thank my major collaborator, Dr. Yue Zhao, and all other members in our, in, in our labs. And this is Dr. Feng Shao, and this is Dr. Yue Zhao. And thank you for your attention.